Ganondorf has returned as the main villain in a 3D Zelda for the first time since Twilight Princess, and boy is he a lot harder to defeat now than he was back then. But there does exist a strat that makes at least a good chunk of this fight pretty much a joke. Honestly, I was amazed when I stumbled upon it. Seeing those meaty chunks of meter just melt off Ganondorf's life bar was very satisfying. So first things first, when you jump down the big hole beneath Hyrule Castle and enter the depths on the way to the Ganondorf fight, you will encounter a Lionel. With the Master Sword, your Sage Partners, and a little bit of patience, he's actually not so hard to defeat. I took him out on my first try. He drops a bunch of powerful items, but none more powerful than the Savage Lionel Bow. Make your way through the rest of the depths, but avoid using this bow until you reach Ganon. Eventually, you'll face the Demon King's army. Phase three of this fight involves you fighting a wave of Gibdos. When defeated, Gibdos drop Gibdo Bones, perhaps the single most OP thing in the entire game. When fused with your arrows, they add an insane plus 40 damage to each arrow. Given how common these things are, that damage is absolutely nutty. Be sure to pick up every single one that drops during the Demon King's army fight. You may even have a bunch still left over from the Gibdo invasion at Gerudo Town. I know I still had a bunch on me. We now have everything we need to take down Ganondorf. The final boss fight is split into four phases, and with this strat, maybe only one should give you trouble. As the fight begins, equip your Savage Lionel Bow, which has a base damage of 32, and it shoots three arrows at a time. We are also going to equip a Gibdo Bone every time we shoot an arrow, which adds 40 damage to each shot. Do the math, it's a lot. And here's what the strat looks like in action. The Great Demon King's health melts like butter if you just shoot him in the face a bunch of times. For phase two, Ganondorf goes Super Saiyan 4 and gets the comically large health bar, but the strategy remains the same. In fact, you could basically stun lock him here if you have your timing right. Keep your distance, and when he begins his dash animation, shoot him in the face. He gets stunned and tries to do the dash attack again. As you can see, he simply can't touch you if your aim is on point. Finally, we have phase three. Sadly, the boat is gonna start breaking by this point, and he doesn't get stunned quite as easily anymore, so you're gonna have to have a pretty honest fight with him here. But luckily, since the first two phases are such a joke, you can save all your healing items and your most powerful weapons just for this phase specifically. Knowing the parry, dodge, and flurry rush timing here is very important if you wanna inflict some easy damage. Honestly, I was pretty bad at it in this video. I need a lot more practice, so I mostly played it safe and was able to take the Demon King down.
There's also phase four, Dragondorf. I included it in this video just to be thorough, but it's really more of a cinematic than a difficult boss fight. A lot like Dark Beast Ganon in Breath of the Wild. Dragon Zelda will not let you fall. She catches you no matter what. When Zelda goes high enough, drop down and glide onto Ganondorf and slash the nasty eye things. There's four of them, and like I said, it's very, very easy. Rinse and repeat until you're able to slash his head. The final boss in Tears of the Kingdom is now defeated. And honestly, the whole thing is pretty easy if you use this strat. If you like this video and want to see more Tears of the Kingdom guides and content, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. During this launch week, I will be uploading tons of guide videos, including more videos just like this one, focusing on how to beat some of the tougher bosses and enemies this game has to offer. But until next time, thanks so much for watching everyone, and take care.